So Swift is a multi-paradigm programming language. Coming from Objective-C, it has object-oriented programming built in its nature. As the language has evolved over the years, more and more features from the world of functional programming have been incorporated. However, we do not always leverage the power and principles of functional programming in our code. When I do consultancy for our clients at 47 degrees, one thing that I have seen myself doing over and over is refactoring their network layer into a more functional style with the purpose of controlling side effects and making them more composable and testable. And that is what I am going to talk about today. So the story usually goes like this. We have a, a backend services team that provides us a set of endpoints for our app to communicate with the server. These endpoints are collected in a Swagger or OpenAPI file. The format of this file is well-defined, it is a standard, and we can distinguish all the operations that we need to implement in order to communicate with the, those endpoints, the parameters that we need to pass for each invocation to the previous endpoints, and all the responses that we can get as a result. Data models that we can exchange with uh, our backend are uh, collected in a different section of this file where we can distinguish single entities with their uh, properties and their types and we can refer to them in order to create more complex structures like arrays. So Swift already provides everything we need to write networking uh, operations thanks to having URL session. So if we try to code the previous endpoint in Swift, we can end up with uh, some code like this, where we have two parts. The first part is creating the request, where we assemble the path for the request, marshal all the parameters that we need to send for this operation, and append a bunch of headers, maybe for authentication, and the second part is actually sending the request. I have seen code like this to be quite common across different code bases. However, if we pay a closer look, we may encounter some potential issues. For instance, if we focus on this uh, send function, we can distinguish that um, it will be exactly the same code if we want to decode it, uh, if we want to decode the response to any other type, but it is tightly coupled to this specific type, making it less reusable and probably leading to code duplication. The callback that we need to pass to data task uh, uh, models states that cannot happen and therefore forces us to deal with these uh, states. For instance, we know that we cannot receive at the same time both data and error. The send function is callback based. This limits our ability to compose this operation with uh, other functions and probably will lead to the callback hell problem. Uh, performing the data task is a side effect uh, that is eagerly evaluated. This breaks referential transparency and makes it hard to reason about the behavior of this code. And finally, using global dependencies are, glo are difficult to control and makes our code much more difficult to test. Well, this seems like a lot of issues for uh, just a short piece of code, but we have some good news. Functional programming can help us alleviate these problems. In order to address them, we will be using some language features present in Swift and Bow, a library for functional programming that I started developing uh, a couple of years ago and that is available as an open source project. So we can start applying a set of refactorings in order to address the previously mentioned issues. For instance, we said that the send function can be generalized. In fact, we can make use of parametric polymorphism 
in order to abstract over the type that needs to be decoded. All this function needs to know about this type is that it conforms to the decodable protocol and nothing else. With this small change, now our send function can send any network request and decode its result into the provided type. The callback that we need to pass to data task has three optional parameters. Data, URL response, and error. What this type means is that we can get any combination of values for these three parameters, ranging from receiving none of them to receiving all of them. But we know that some of these combinations are not valid and should never happen. We can make use of algebraic data types in order to make illegal states impossible to represent. We can model this situation with the either type that models either having an error or a tuple with data and URL response. And these are the only possible two cases that can be modeled with this type and the only two cases that we will have to handle. Getting rid of the callbacks could be a little bit more difficult. But thankfully, Bo provides the IO data type that uh, helps us in this task and has the additional benefit of suspending side effects. IO has um, an async constructor that helps wrapping callback-based operations. Thus, instead of communicating via the callback, we can just return an IO value that describes our network operation and uh, can be composed with others using non-combinators like map or flat map. Finally, instead of using global dependencies or instantiating them inside uh, our send function, we can make them explicit and pass them as parameters to the function that we can control during testing. We can even go further and group them into some sort of API configuration object where we can decide which concrete implementation for these dependencies we provide and uh, make our, uh, the rest of our code agnostic about this decision. Can we do it even better? We can split the parameter list into the parameters we need to build our network request and the dependencies we need to run it. And actually, we can even group this uh, configuration into the return type, uh, thanks to the environmental effect type uh, included in both. I know this may sound scary, but this type represents a suspended side effect operation that has a dependency on an environment, in this case, the API configuration, and will eventually uh, provide either an error or a value. With this change, our uh, networking functions now only need to receive the parameters they need to do their job, and supplying the dependencies can be postponed to a later moment. So we have uh, refactored our network layer into uh, a pure function um, that has no side effects. But that is only half of the job. What about creating the request? Well, creating the request is a repetitive process of writing boilerplate code uh, by translating the operations and models in the Swagger or OpenAPI specification file and creating Swift code to handle those. Moreover, if our specification changes in the future, we need to make sure that our implementation remains in sync with the latest version of our, our contract. But that is a very error-prone task. That is why today we are releasing a new tool that will help us uh, with this task by automating it. And this tool is Bow OpenAPI. Bow OpenAPI is a command line tool that takes your Swagger or OpenAPI specification file and generates a Swift package that can be consumed with the Swift package manager and contains all your networking functions. 
if your contract ever changes in the future, all you need to do is regenerate it and everything will remain in sync with the latest version of your backend. Bow Open API can be installed using Brew and can be invoked using this uh, command. It will take every operation in the uh, specification file and will generate a pure Swift function. And for each data model described in the file, it will generate an immutable value object based on Swift enums and structs. Using the generated code is as easy as importing it into your project. And then finding the method that you want to invoke starting from the API entry point. If you actually want to run the request, you have to create a configuration object, supply it to the request, and then invoke and save run sync or async, depending on the execution model that you'd like to have. The generated package includes a module that is specifically meant for testing. This module augments the API configuration with methods that let us stop responses to our requests. With this uh, addition, we can now test different scenarios with no mocks and always using the exact same code that we will be using in production. With custom assertions included in the generated package, we can check that our logic uh, behaves and returns at the values that we uh, expect. Bow Open API generates code based on the same functional style that we have seen before and uses the environmental effect type uh, provided in Bow. So you may be wondering why we decided to choose Bow and not Combine. And the truth is that most of the refactorings that I have shown are equally applicable if you use Combine. But there are some notable differences between both libraries. The first one, and most obvious, is that Combine only works in the latest versions of uh, iOS and macOS, whereas Bo is uh, working also in earlier versions. Um, the types provided in Bo IO and NVIO are always lazy. However, the, the most of the types provided in Combine are uh, mostly eager. And as we have said before, this breaks referential transparency and makes reasoning about the behavior of the code much uh, harder. Combine provides uh, some lazy types, but as soon as you start applying combinators like map or flatmap, you end up feeling the need to call the infamous method erase to any publisher, and then you lose type information, and uh, it forces us to rely only on the programmer's discipline to keep everything lazy. But that is also error prone. If we want to retry um, uh, a request, all we can do with combine is retry based on a number of times. Bo provides a composable and powerful way of creating retrial policies based on already provided building blocks. For instance, in, in this case, we can retry a request following an exponential back of algorithm to a maximum of 10 retrials. And finally, um, Combine provides sequential composition of effects using the flat map operation, as we have said before, that is also supported in both. But we provide an additional imperative style syntax that has uh, the exact same uh, functional properties that we have seen uh, before. So, Bo is a, a principal library to write uh, functional programming uh, using Swift. In this talk, I have only scratched the surface of what it uh, is able to offer. So I encourage you to go and take a look at our documentation if you want to know more about both or want to learn more about functional programming.
both has proven very useful for us to write uh, our network layer to the point we decided to create uh, Bow Open API and add it to uh, our functional ecosystem. It is a very nice tool that we have been already using internally and that uh, can save you a lot of time of writing repetitive boilerplate code uh, with the additional benefit of uh, having a result that is more composable and testable. Most of the refactorings that I have shown in this talk are equally valid if you are using Combine or any other streaming library or even in other parts of your code. And that is the key lesson that you need to take from this talk. Functional programming provides universal abstractions and techniques that can bring value to your code, regardless of uh, libraries, technologies, or languages that you choose. Functional programming can be and will be a game changer. Thank you very much. Yeah.